Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Barty. I'm Ethan Rudon. And I'm Lucian Parrish. And for today's episode of The Verdict, we'll be talking about our favorite movies from the 1980s. This is The Verdict. Spoilers ahead. So my movie that we're going to be talking about is an animation crossover classic called Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Here's the trailer. It's the winner of three Academy Awards, like you've never seen it before. Who Framed Roger Rabbit 25th Anniversary Edition. I'm a toon. Toons make people live. <laughs> For the first time on iPod and Blu-ray, it's the edge of your seat thriller that hits like a ton of bricks. We toons may act idiotic, but we're not stupid. It's groundbreaking. The whole thing stinks like yesterday's diapers. A technically amazing feat. Allow me, mademoiselle. It says rabbit sees stars, not birds. Stars! Can we lose the playback, please? Tunes. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. And that's not all. There's also three digitally restored shorts. What a deal! Catch Who Framed Roger Rabbit 25th Anniversary Edition for the first time on Blu-ray. And welcome back. So as you saw from the trailer, the movie does a great job blending animation and live action together. Like, this has been done before. This isn't like the first time it has been like done before, but this is the first time they really did like use technology and robotics and other tricks to really make sure that the animation character, the animated characters and the live action characters are playing together in a in a more realistic way where you it doesn't feel like they're not like live action like uh, actors and actors are not talking to nothing. They really are do like feel like feel like they're actually talking to like something. And so pretty much the premise of this movie is about Eddie Valiant. He's pretty much a cartoon detective, or he used to be a cartoon detective because at, because of, you know, on some unfortunate uh, accidents, uh, a toon killed his brother, as they say in the movie. And so basically he has to help with uh, finding a case about who framed uh, Roger Rabbit. Uh, so pretty much uh, Acme, person who owns Toontown, Town, pretty much dies, gets crushed by, I think it was like, either a stake or piano, and they have to find his will, have to find who the murder is, and there's all these like very like noir, like clues and characters who come in and try to find out like who did it, pretty much. It's pretty much a like an old school noir uh, movie. So, uh, what do y'all think of it? I like it. I like like what you said with um, blending the animation with the like live action for like when this movie what was that 1988, I think. I think it looks really good and very believable that these people are interacting with animated cartoons. You know, mm -hmm. I think that is really cool. They're able to pull that off. And like you said, this is one, wasn't the first time this is done, but I feel like it was the first time it was really like mainstream and done very well. And it was also really cool to see all these like golden age cartoons interact, like Mickey Mouse and uh, was it Bugs Bunny on the same screen yeah, yeah, at see, the same time. I'm sure at the time people saying that they probably like went nuts seeing that. Oh yeah, so pretty much the behind the scenes there was a deal where Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny had to be in the same scene. If they were going to be the same scene, they had to have like the same screen time. Uh, they also had Daffy Duck and Donald Duck in the same scene earlier in a bar playing the piano. So this is really the first time you had these characters like from different properties, not just from Disney, Warner Brothers. Uh, I forgot who owns Felix the Cat and all these other characters like uh, Betty Boop comes in. Yeah. But you also have original characters like like uh, Roger Rabbit. He's an original character for this movie. Jessica Rabbit is a very popular one. She's original for this movie. Uh, but the thing about it is that, yeah, this really was like the biggest crossover at the time because, you know, companies nowadays, if they try to do this. Yeah, they do it all the time. I'm sure like if we saw it came out now, we went bad. And I was like, oh, okay. But like at the time, I'm sure this was like super like huge and stuff you know yeah. it's like um what was it chippendale rescue rangers that came yeah, out it's kind of it's, it's kind of like that you know but it's the 1980s version of that yeah chippendale rescue rangers nowadays that came on disney plus was really like the i guess uh, latest one that has done a really big crossover with different companies because it had like characters from all over the place they even had ugly sonic the ugly song design oh, from like yeah, the sonic movie that, that yeah. came out he was pretty yeah, cool I forgot about that. yeah but uh, going back to roger rabbit like uh for me like, you can tell that a movie has classic appeal when I know it, because I had the DVD for this movie. Uh, I know people still reference, like, Jessica Rabbit every Halloween. People still, I think, go back to this movie. And the reason for that is because of the characters. Uh, the main character, Eddie Valiant, is played by the late Bob Hoskins, who, like, passed away years ago. 
Um, but Hoskins was a very treasure. Uh, he also, unfortunately, played Mario in that really terrible live action yeah. Mario movie. Mm -hmm. We'll forget about that one. Yeah. yeah, we got a new one coming out. It looks good. Uh -huh. um, and also, Christopher Lloyd, his uh, performance, you know, being the villain in this. Uh, it's funny enough, in this week, uh, he has a crossover in both our movies, uh, being a not-so-good guy, but uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was cool, and he, I think he did a great job. Yeah, and the thing about this movie is that the mystery, you can tell who Immaculate is. I mean, you have uh, Christopher Lloyd playing just Doom. Mm -hmm. If you can't see, he's not evil. I'm not trying to do some profile, but he definitely did it. And they, <laughs> But they do leave certain hints, like, of course, spoilers, that he actually was the one who killed Eddie's brother. He actually is a tomb. But the creepy thing about the end is that you don't actually see his tomb body. You just see him wearing a human, I guess, costume, but he still has a cartoon eyes and smile and high pitched voices. Yeah, it's a little, a little off putting. That's a, it's like, like he's wearing a skin suit, almost. Like. Yeah, so the famous line is that, you remember me, Eddie? When I killed your brother! <laughs> <laughs> Unsettling for a kid, I'd say, in the 1980s. Yeah, this movie is definitely not afraid of tackling some very adult uh, yeah. subject. It's, it's very much like, you know, for adults and kids, you know, like, um, you know, you can like, you just take your kids to watch it and also you can enjoy it yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this movie doesn't shy away from, you know, alcohol, from even, like, the very sex appeal of Jessica yeah. Rabbit. <laughs> like, there are jokes where they do, like, make very, like, whoa, that's very risky jokes. I don't know if the movie came out today that would make. Uh, it had to probably be on streaming service, not in theaters, but because this, I feel like this movie doesn't, like, talk down to kids, but I also feel like it's a great thing to adults, adults, too, because adults also grew up in these cartoons. Like, adults mm -hmm. love Looney Tunes, they love Disney, they love, like, all these old-school cartoons, and so I feel like the movie does a great job of not, like, saying that, oh, yeah, this is only for adults, but it does do a great balance to bas balancing the uh, adult and the uh, kid audience. And that might be part of the, why, the reason why it's still being talked about today. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't pan, like, cater to one specific demographic. It's yeah. just a movie for everybody to like, you know, watch and enjoy. And that's why it's a classic. Yeah. yeah, and they do talk about, you know, alcoholism, because Eddie is alcoholic because of his brother dying and everything. And uh, that is, like, very personal to people who have lost, you know, somebody. Um, I mean, they, at the beginning, they were, like, make a joke of it, like, yeah, his brother got killed by dropping a piano. I'd say that's an old classic cartoon. But then they have this amazing shot where they were, like, in his office, and they just show all the pictures of their history together. And I think this movie does also a great job with cinematography, you know. Uh, there's also this great shot where they blend live action and animation, where you have um, Eddie in Toontown. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, judging by like what DVD you have, like you can definitely tell like the scenes and everything. But you know, yeah. for the, but the animation still holds up, the blending still holds up. So I think this movie still does a great job of blending animation and live action. Mm -hmm. Especially like the interactions between like real life and cartoon characters. Like to me, I was like trying to my head, I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is gonna look right. But like, if I was trying to make myself like, oh yeah, this doesn't look right. But like, it does. It works, and it's it's just crazy. It's still crazy to me how like well it holds up and like. I'd, I'd like to see how they like went about um, doing that, um, getting inter like interact. I don't know if they had like human stand-ins or. Oh yeah, how they so um, there are some scenes I forgot which scene specifically, but when well, I remember, so there's a scene where Jessica Rabbit does her little song and dance, mm -hmm. and she grabs uh, Eddie by the tie. Yeah, that's, that's the scene I was talking a about. Robot. Yeah, oh, robot. robot. Okay. Robot, and they do actually have like other like they actually had like a Bugs Bunny, not Bugs Bunny, but Roger Rabbit like doll that. Eddie interacted with when he was like holding Roger by the neck. Mm -hmm. That's something that would do. But it just showed you how great of an actor you are. Because there have been some yeah. movies recently that came out, like maybe you can see the new Space Jam, where the uh, actors yeah. have to interact with cartoon characters or like characters that are CG or animated, where you can tell they're just sound like they're just talking to a wall and not yeah. giving that much emotion. Because it is very difficult to give your give emotion, interact with somebody, especially if no, there's nothing there for you to interact with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's also interesting, like, um, like you said with that, um, I, lose, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, interacting with someone, like, holding it, you know, like that, and be able to give a performance like that. I'm sure, like, they, like obviously, like, when they do stuff like that, they'll have, like, a probably audio clip of the voice actor in the background, mm -hmm. whatever. But still, to be able to, like, give a performance like that, just, like, holding, like, pretty much like a doll is very awesome to see. All right, well, time to move on, and you're about to introduce our next one. Mm -hmm. Up next, we're going to tackle the gritty classic Scarface after these messages. What a disaster. <laughs> you're a disaster. Hmm. 
This is a disaster. You can't be ready for every little disaster, but you can prepare for a big one. Make an emergency plan today. Welcome back. Scarface is a very close movie of mine since my family really does enjoy it. It's about a Cuban refugee coming into America trying to make a living for himself. Here's the trailer. Me, I want what's coming to me. Oh, well, what's coming to you, Tony? The world, Chico. And everything in it. It's definitely not a legal type of living that he's made for himself here in America, specifically in Florida. But he did try and own the world one time, but his ego really did get ahead of him. What do y'all think about it? Yeah, I think so. Like the whole movie, he just, you know, he's very just an awful, deplorable person, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was glad he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things, like, eh, I, I was indifferent. I was like, yeah, he had it coming. But, but also what I found is funny, I was talking to you guys before this is, um, the, you know, the whole movie, he does all these awful things, and then right at the end, he, um, he does a good thing or the right thing and spares that family because he sees that guy has kids he was uh, ordered to kill. Mm -hmm. And that's what ends up getting him killed, is him being a, a nice person. I thought that was very uh, um, a comedic way to die. <laughs> I don't think it was him really being a nice person. I think it was him staying true to his ideals because he, he said beforehand, hey, I ain't going to kill no kids. And when they were like, no, 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 we still got to do this, he's like, no. And he puts a bullet in his head, and he's just like, you ain't gonna go against what I said, and then he dies for it. Yeah, well, I guess because he, did, he didn't want to kill indiscriminately, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, I feel like the most part of the people he killed in the movie, um, I mean, not all, but, you know, they, well, um, at least to him, they had it coming yeah, in his mind. The thing about this movie that I will say is that when, um, when it comes to movies with characters you don't like, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I don't like this person. I just want to turn this off. But I feel like this movie does a good job of like still keeping him somewhat entertaining. Because mm -hmm. if we were just doing, just being deplorable, I'm just going to be like, I don't like this guy. But I'm just like, you know what? I'm, I'm, intri I'm intrigued to see where this goes. And he does give his comeuppance when he takes a dip at the end. So mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I do enjoy the movies where like it shows off the main characters. Like, oh yeah, he's not good, but you're still going to see his journey throughout it because he started out from the bottom, he went all the way to the top, and then he went right back yeah. down. Very literally, yeah. but... Because <laughs> he was almost in a way like pursuing the American dream, but he was pursuing it in the very wrong way, and that's mm -hmm. what got him killed. He was doing it in Florida. Yeah, <laughs> the Florida man. This is the original Florida man He was man the story. Florida man. Scarface was the original Florida man. You sh mm -hmm. It all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion, he shouldn't have been chasing No after. against anyone from Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he shouldn't have been chasing after the girl he was chasing after. I do not like her one bit. Yeah. But the scenes with Manny when he was trying to get him on the floor with a tongue flicking. <laughs> that was just so funny. <laughs> Had to get those kids he, he over. Was, he was trying to riz her up, man, and it just didn't work. He was like, oh, you going to do it? You going to do it? All right, let me watch. Hey, kids. Look at that one right there. <laughs> this is going to be real funny. Watch you get slapped. <laughs> yeah. Well, also another thing is like just the style, like the suits, like Manny and uh, Tony wore the whole movie. Like they were styling the whole movie. Like it made, they were um, almost like, you know, romanticizing being the Coke deal. I was like, man, I, you know, I, I, I could be Coke deal and have a suit like that, you know, and a, have a nice bathtub mm -hmm. like that. Well, you know? to watch yourself. <laughs> have, a, have a bathtub with a pillow in it, you know. Mm -hmm. Frank would have like, looked real nice good, too, yeah. if he didn't look so old, like 75, but, you know. Now, do I need to call 911? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta look out. No, I'll order the pillows right, or just now for my uh, my bathtub. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I mean, we're just talking, my, like, during the, the trade, I was like, why would you have a pillow in a bathtub? Because uh, you got that kind of, you got, you got bathtub pillow money. But not getting too far ahead, I wanted to talk about the, one of the earliest scenes that was in there at his very first time when he was going to those Colombians to get that coke from those people. And he had to watch his friend get dismembered yeah, with get, a chainsaw, get chainsaw yeah. while his friend was talking to some woman. And I was just like, what? Yeah. 
That's definitely like the shootouts in this movie were like they were intense, man. Mm -hmm, yeah. Like I don't know, like I, compared to like more, like modern, more modern movies like that, you know, I don't feel like you feel it as much. Like that is just like straight up, just like yeah, because it wasn't like cartoony or it wasn't like pulled up for a it joke. Felt, it seemed like it, it like actually like went actually down, real. yeah. That, and I was gonna get mad at you because I was like, I gotta watch two hours and fifty minutes of this, <laughs> and my mom might walk in. <laughs> Yeah, there was there was only one like nudity scene that you'd have to worry about your mom walking in on, but it was like twenty seconds. That was it. It just went away. But at the end, uh, when he was going to do that, uh, what was it? He went to New York. Yeah. And he told his friend Manny, "Hey, you're going to need to take care of stuff for me." And he just disappears. And I would understand why he'd be mad about that, but killing him at the end. <laughs> I don't think that yeah. should have been the... Yeah, no, he married his sister. His sister went from being uh, married to a widow in, like, in a day. Mm -hmm. She got that widow speed run. <laughs> 80%. Yeah, that was kind of creepy. I was like, I was getting on the call. Yeah, and, like, the whole time, like, man, he was hitting on her, Tony was like, hey, old man, like, chill, like, you know? It's like, oh, your sister's cute. Don't talk to her like that! I yeah, it, yeah I, it's that thing in movies where I just... Sometimes I get uncomfortable where I'm just like, is there something else going here when like the dad's being overprotective or the brother's being overprotective? Mm -hmm. I'm just like, look, yeah. I get overprotective, but it gets to a point where it's like, it's yeah. a little, it's a little weird, yeah, it's yeah. a little like a little I, complex. And it kind of shows at the end where she walks into his office, you know, after he killed her, and yeah, he, yeah. she was like, well, what do you think of me, huh? And they start shooting at him. He was like, no, 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 you gotta chill, you gotta chill, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but when she got shot, then he was like, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> He was pretty. He was pretty depressed yeah. at the end of that. Like as yeah. soon as he killed Manny, he was just like, man. Yeah, I thought it was funny at the end though when um they're raiding his like mansion and compound. One of his henchmen was trying to get into his office. It was like banging. Let, let me in. He's like, let me in. Let me in. Please, man. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> just got. It's like he he had plenty of time to let him in, but he's like, man, they no. came into his office, but then they start running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They sure left him alive for a pretty long time, considering he was knocking on that door for a while. They yeah. were just and like, where'd the guy come from? Oh, he yeah. was just outside. He, he, he was doing he was a pretty having good a cigarette job. Break. Yeah. He's like, oh god. Um, but also, like when he walks out, like and um, out from his office, and he gets like riddled with bullets, and he's like still, <laughs> he, he got the he's plot like, armor. Come get me! Come get me! And he's, and he's like shoulders are, like back. bouncing and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it gets to a point where oh, it's like, right. okay, like, look, this is kind of getting like, realistic. Shouldn't you be going down? And then he yeah, just, I mean, it, not to cut you off, it was like realistic at the beginning, but they got towards the end where we started hitting. Okay, now we're getting some more comic comedy that level that where uh, it's like, hey, say hello to my little friend. It's like bringing more comedy. Yeah, it's where like, as the beginning, like, was more serious. And yeah, it's like, dramatic. It's like, I get he had a gun in his office, but why, of all things, why a grenade launcher? <laughs> it's like, you know, that's like, you want to sell a thing. What if it wasn't a situation like that? And you're just like, oh, well, I guess I got to repair my drywall now mm -hmm. after I I'm just grenaded assuming, this guy. I'm just assuming they wanted to bring back that like comedic effect because pretty much throughout the whole movie, they were like doing that comedic effect a lot but at the end when he murdered his friend he was just like completely depressed and that's like a really sad point so it's like oh let's just whip out a grenade launcher and shoot at the door so yeah. i think that'd be pretty cool <laughs> and also when that guy comes behind him and blasts him in the back of that shotgun and just blows him off i'm like i don't know if that would really happen you know but obviously i, I probably couldn't show that but so you have to, to tell me this man got through all these bullets but then this one shotgun was like a werewolf. Like the only thing I killed is a shotgun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, and like, where'd that guy? That guy like, where'd that guy come from? That came up behind him. Like, <laughs> why is he in shadow? <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'm a, a per medical professional or anything, but getting in, shot in the in the spine with a double barrel shotgun, I think someone's gonna die from that. Yeah, but I also don't think they would just like fall back. They, they would. Uh, there wouldn't be much of them left. I oh yeah, they, there would just be a hole. I don't think he'd fall. Actually, he could fall down. Like even after. like when he was getting riddled with bullets, you know, his shoulders like he. Would, like, be I am right here, bro. I'm right here. <laughs> I, I know. I thought I just found that part kind of goofy. I loved it. But uh, after we take a quick break, we'll take a look at the board game turned uh, Who Done It game uh, with Clue. My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org Shiro. The 1985 uh, Clue movie was um, directed by Jonathan Lynn. The movie is based on the Hasbro board game of the same name. Let's check out the trailer.
every person in this room has the perfect motive. Stand back! For murder. What do you mean? Murder. But only one of these suspects is the murderer. Is it the timid Mr. Green? Why are you screaming? Because I'm right out of one! Screaming! Or the militant Colonel Mustard? Oh, if I was the killer, I would kill you next. Huh? I said F. F. Mrs. White, who helped her husband on his way. What's well, a matter of life after death? Now that he's dead, I have a life. Ah! Miss Scarlet, who's helped many men along the way. Practice makes perfect. Huh. Professor Plum, who's looking for a way. I'm looking, I'm looking. Mrs. Peacock. I have absolutely no idea what we're doing here, but I am determined to enjoy myself. Or did the butler do it? No. 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 Paramount Pictures invites you to an evening of mystery. Murder. This is getting quite serious. And madness. <laughs> In the movie that makes a scene of the crime. So it! Clue. It's not just a game anymore. All right, so much like in this movie, like yours, it's a whodunit mystery. And I think uh, what really plays to this movie very well is just like um, it blends the mystery also with like slapstick, just comedy. And I think that's one thing that's underrated about this movie is just like how funny it is. Because even like I'll go back now, because like, I love this movie as a kid, and I go back now and watch it, and I still um, I catch myself laughing at, laughing at some of the jokes. But um, this movie, it does follow um, all the characters in the board game, like Mr. Green, you know, Miss White and all that. But it also adds... Um, Wadsworth the butler and uh, Yvette the maid, and it basically um, everyone is invited to this dinner party at this big, you know, spooky mansion, whatever. And um, this other character, Mr. Body, shows up, and it turns out he is um, blackmailing, blackmailing everybody. And uh, he brings all the classic weapons: the lead pipe, the wrench, the pistol. And he's like, gives everybody, um, everyone unwraps a, a gift from him, and it's the weapons. And he's like, okay, um, so um, they want he wants them to kill Wadsworth the butler. And he's like, all right, if you kill him, um, we'll, uh, we'll just like put him in the basement, walk out and leave. I'm going to turn off the lights. He turns off the lights. He got shot. Or he is it presumed he is shot. And that kind of lets off a chain of events of people getting killed and trying to figure out who's the murderer. And um, everyone splits off. And it just, um, and the comedy and the madness ensues from there. And other people also come in that um, get, get tied up into it, like a driver and all that thing. And it just, it's crazy how everything ends up being connected. Like the driver that shows up. He ends up being um, a driver for um, Mr. Ye oh, what's his name? Colonel Mustard. Colonel Mustard. Forgot his name. Oh, yeah. He was a driver for. You know, it's just crazy how everything's kind of kind of connected. You know, and then the the singing telegram lady at the end. Um, she ended up being a patient that uh, Professor Plum um, had that uh, he did not so nice things with. The thing that you know doctors aren't supposed to do with patients. He did that with her, and um, I really just um, I really like the plot of the movie, and also, as you asked me before this, um, you know, there are three different endings, and um, when this movie first came out in theaters, um, each time the movie played, a different ending would play. Oh. So yeah, you and like someone else go have a different ending, so when you get to talking about it, yeah, uh, but also I have the Blu-ray of this, and you um, have an option, so when you go to play it, you can hit play a random ending, or you can just play all three at the end. Mm. And it's a really cool thing, because all three of them, like, they make sense, they could have happened. I feel like it's never done nowadays. Like, I feel like yeah. the closest we'll ever get is like an extended cut or deleted scenes, but never like a completely different ending. I mean, I remember another movie that had like a completely different ending was, was because of, you know, like audience, test audience yeah. responses was, uh, was it, it was a, it was a horror, it was a horror show, or it was the one where uh, it was like the plant that would eat people. Plant that would eat people. Uh, it's familiar. Uh, oh, uh, if the, the famous plant say, feed me Seymour. Okay, yeah. yeah like a little shop order. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, but, yeah. but the reason it had different endings is because of, you know, audience Different, different answers, yeah. But there, they just did it for pure fun. I think I think it was cool enough for the story to be open-ended enough to where there the could be, a, like, different endings. Mm -hmm. I think that was really cool. Uh, how do you feel about different endings like that? Because uh, I feel like the reason why it's never, that's not done anymore. As people, not, yeah, people like to argue. Because yeah. it would be, like, thing of, like, okay, it's very cheap. Where it's like, okay, did you just do this just so because you wrote yourself in a wall, you just want to satisfy everybody? But, but I, I feel like a lot of people just want one ending that made sense. So they can look I back at the movie and say, like, yeah, that makes sense why this person did it. I think it was on brand for them because it's based off the board game. And the mm -hmm. board game has tons of different endings. So I think it was kind of on brand for the movie for them to do it that way. And I think it was very 
smart for him to do it that way. Okay. I just think that when, uh, the reason they don't do it anymore is because most movies, they want like a timeline, like let's say like Marvel. Yeah, so they can make sequels. They have yeah. a constant timeline. And a but sequel. When you have a, yeah, and the sequel. We won't talk about those. But uh, they need like one specific ending so they can keep that story going. But when they have multiple endings, then it's going to start getting a little bit too uncontrollable. But with movies like Clue, where it's like, it's a very self-contained movie. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no... It's very self-contained, so they're yeah. able to just... Because I don't think they could do a prequel or anything. Oh. <laughs> but also another thing that's great about this movie is uh, Tim Curry's performance as Wadsworth the butler. I mean, obviously, Tim Curry... I mean, it's just Tim Curry doing he's, Tim Curry. He's doing it, yeah. He's doing, doing Tim stuff. Curry and what he did in, yeah. like, uh, what was it? Uh, Home Alone 2. Yeah. He did Tim Curry in... Uh, what was the other one he did? Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, there was... Obviously, there... There's a recent animated movie, it was an old school one where I used to watch as a kid. It came out in 1995. It was called uh, Pebble and the Penguin. And it had Tim Curry as the villain. It was just Tim Curry just being Tim Curry. Just, yeah. Tim Curry being an evil penguin. Yeah, just him being his evil self. Yeah, and like every scene he was in, I mean, he stole it. Even, and even like, even him being like a good actor, even his comedic you know, scenes and stuff like that. It just like, I feel like the, the timing, the comedic timing in this movie is so great. Mm -hmm. Because also it's jokes, but it's also like slapstick. And I know people don't like slapstick nowadays. But I think in this movie it works. Just no, this is the stuff. thing. People love slapstick. Yeah. People love going back to the stuff like Tom and Jerry and Looney Tunes. They just hate lazy slapstick. Yeah, no, uh, I don't think this was late. Cause they, like, hate, they hate cheap slapstick. Like when uh, Mr. Green, he takes Miss Peacock and you know, like, sl slaps her. You know, he's like, I have to stop her from screaming. <laughs> you know, yeah, because like that, you know? there's other classic movies that maybe I should pick. I, I think it was in the 80s where it was an uh, airplane. We're going to have a classic scene of everybody just coming out and stopping the movie. Like, get home, you stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Have one on the phone. And even later in the movie, they're doing a recap of stuff that happened in the evening, and the team Curry picks Miss Pika up again and like, smacks her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I had to stop her from screaming. <laughs> yeah. So and the it, thing is, like, as long as you have good timing, good delivery, yeah. and good characters to actually care about and not like, overuse it, not use it as a crust, then it can actually, slaps can actually work. And I mean, that's yeah. like, that's the rule of any comedy. Yeah, set up and build up and then pay off. As long as it's not a crutch, it's going to turn out really nice, I'd say. I, I don't think it was, it was just like it happened to be there and it was it was great mm -hmm. and it worked. And also it's just cool because, you know, each of the rooms um, that were named after the board game, like the study, the library, the lounge and stuff like that. And at the one of the endings, um, spoiler, I know, uh, Mr. Green, he um, ends up shooting Wadsworth. <laughs> and um, I forgot how it goes, but he's like, yeah, I, I, I killed him with the revolver. In the study, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, he said the thing." <laughs> uh, but I yeah, also, I think my favorite ending was the Mr. Green ending because um, when they were going through and uh, saying what everybody was being blackmailed for, he stands up. You know, he's kind of like, I was, I don't, "I'm gonna go ahead and expose. I don't want it to be exposed. I expose myself. I'm, I'm homosexual." You know, he sits back down, and then at the end of his ending, he shoots him, <laughs> and he's like, "I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife," and it cuts to the, the credits. <laughs> I remember as a kid, I thought that was so funny. <laughs> it was like the ultimate plot twist. No. Yeah. Because <laughs> in that end, it turns out he was working for the FBI. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was just so funny. Wow, this is Clue. Uh, I mean, the only time I ever heard of Clue was when, you know, of course, back in the day when it comes to board game, but I actually never played it. And so going into this, I'm like, Clue, that's based on the board game. And I looked it up, wait a minute, it yeah. is. So, yeah. uh, you know, I had to really, I didn't, of course, finish it because I had to watch his three hour, three -hour movie, movie, Scarface. Yeah. But, My uh, bad. But, uh, I was, but I really did uh, enjoy like what I saw of it. I'm really like looking forward to like going back and watch it when I can. And it's one of those movies, at least like once a year, I'll go back and watch it just because it holds up that well. Mm -hmm. And it's despite how old it is, you know? And like, I, I know some people might find it a little goofy or whatever, but. It was my favorite movie as a kid, and like it's one of those movies I had like an obsession with. So you know, yeah, I respect that. Well, that's all the time we have. Tune in next week where we'll be talking about our favorite musicals. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. See you next time.